Hello everyone, as you know, I am Paul, your eHobby guy, and in today's video, we will be looking at this small kit. And what this kit is called is Human Infrared Switch. Now, I wasn't even going to make a video about this, except for one thing. I built this kit before, and I completely messed it up. Why did I mess it up? I'm going to talk about the mistake that I made with this one after we do the build on this one. So I rebought the kit. We're going to do the build. We're going to see exactly what it does. We're going to make sure you don't make the same mistake I made and have a lot of fun doing it. Let's jump right in. Okay, let's take everything out here. So I'm just going to separate everything by component type. Of course, we just have our PCB here. Really? This is just our JST connector. We'll put that together with the PCB mating component right over here. Four transistors here. Zener diode. Terminal block. IC and IC socket. Lots of resistors here. Two half watt and the rest quarter watt resistors. So we'll have to be careful about those. One red LED. One small trim pot resistor, two electrolytic capacitors, one more transistor, two more Zener diodes, three non-polarized capacitors, 104, which is 0.1 microfarad, two standard diodes, non-Zener, non-light emitting, one infrared emitting and one infrared detecting diode. Let's get all of these spread out a little and begin the assembly process. Okay, looking at this right off the bat, there are no instructions with this. Everything we need to know is printed right on the circuit board here, and it's called EQ Kit. Nothing on the back, it's just called EQ Kit. There is, and let's try and zoom in on this, LIS-2, and then there's a 130120, if that's of any help to anybody. My approach to building these is basically get all of the low profile components on first. We would be looking at the diodes and resistors first, and then the non-polarized capacitors, and then we'll take it from there. Now since we have no circuit diagram for this, we do have a lot of information here. Some information is missing. We have D1, D2, and D3, which is diode 1, diode 2, and diode 3. One diode is just a simple red diode. One is a light-emitting diode, and the other is a detecting diode. To figure out which is which, I did consult the picture. The picture was clear enough in the eBay listing to show which one of these is which. So when we get to that, that's how we're going to tell which diode to put where. Here I am mounting the two half-watt resistors first. And then once those two are on and soldered, I progressively just went through each of the resistors, mounting them into the places that they belong. All of the values are printed onto the board itself. And so I just measured with my multimeter and placed every resistor exactly where it belongs. Everything that I can reach has been mounted here resistor-wise. Looks like there's a couple left here. I think they go under here. Let's take a closer look. Yep, two left here, a 10 meg and a 5.1 meg. And that is all of the resistors on. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 14, 15 resistors all mounted exactly where they're supposed to be. Now let's uh, move on to, let's say, uh, this is nice and low profile, little IC socket. Let's get the IC socket on. The one thing we have to be careful with the IC socket is to make sure that we align the notch, which is on this end, with the notch on the silk screen on the board right here. So it would go That's the socket in place. Now we have the notch on this end exactly lined up with the silk screen. Now I think we'll go with the Zener diodes. There are three Zener diodes, and they are 
and hopefully you can read it here, but there's a D6 right here, and you can tell by this symbol here, it's the diode symbol with another line right under here. With diodes, of course, we do have polarity to observe, so we have D6, D8 with this symbol, and over here, it's a bit shaded here, but D7, so we have D6, 7, and 8. With this symbol here, we have the negative side down here, the negative side down here, and with D8, we have the negative side up. On the Zener diode, the negative side, the cathode, is represented by the black end of the diode right here. All three Zeners in place. Let's get these soldered up. All right, now we're making progress. So at this point, oops, my Zener diode lifted a little here. Let me bend it over, you can see. So I'll drop that Zener down. But right now we have all resistors, socket, and three Zener diodes. Let's move on to the two standard diodes. D5 here, represented by this symbol, and right here, D4. So D4 and D5, again, since they're standard diodes, polarity matters. In the symbol on the silk screen right here, the flat portion right here represents the cathode. Cathode on the diode is this end. That's the orientation we'll take with both. Here are two diodes mounted with polarity observed. Now let's look at the three capacitors that we have here. And they are going at C1 right here, C5 right here, and C2 right here. Let's get these mounted. That's the three capacitors mounted. Okay, at this point, we are down to the transistors. And looking at the transistors, here we have one, two, three, four, and one right here, number five. And you can see right here, they're numbered 9012, 9012, 9012, 9012, and we have an 8050 here. The orientation is fixed by the silk screen, as we know. So I'll get these mounted and soldered, and then we'll come back. Here we have our transistors, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the fifth one here is the 8050. Next, let's look at these electrolytic capacitors. We have two of them. One of them is 100 microfarads. The other is 47 microfarads. It's quite clear right here. This one is the 47 microfarad. It's the smaller of the two. And right up here is the 100 microfarad. You can see it right down there. And you can see the circle, half of which is shaded. The unshaded half, you can see here, is the plus. So we're going to put the plus here. The anode is going in this half. Same with here. Cathode on the other side. Let's get these two mounted. And there we have our two capacitors mounted. Let's get trim pot. Here's the trim pot, and it goes right here. It's, it's labeled VR1, variable resistor 1. Three pins right here. Let me see if I can pop this in. Yes. Yes, this trim pot popped in really nicely. It has indentation that keeps it stand off. You can see it's standing off the board a little bit. Let's get this soldered in. And that's the trim pot mounted. Let's get this two pin JST connector. So I'm gonna change the orientation of this board for this. Here we go. Two pin JST connector. Let's get this in here. Now this has short pins in it. So I'm gonna just glob this right on top, hold it in place, and that's that mounted. Here's the two pin terminal block. Now the two pin terminal block goes right here, but in between we have the red LED. It's, it's called D3, and I got this from the picture. So if I put this on first, it might make it difficult for the red LED, so I think I'll pop that red LED on first. Now we're ready to get this two pin terminal block in place, pop that in place, and once again, this this has two short pins. I can't bend them over. I'm going to get my little piece of putty here. What's remaining is our relay. And there's not much left, as we can see. The relay fits right in here. The two pins close to each other. There's only one way I can get this relay in. And so I'll pop that in. And again, using my trusty putty here. Okay, this is the relay mounted. All six pins, making sure we got all six pins soldered. Last two, the emitter and the receiver infrared diodes right here. Again, the only thing we have to worry about with these is polarity. 
and the polarity is indicated right here. Here you can see the straight line on this. It refers to the cathode. Also, there's a little straight line right here, which is represented by you can see this flat surface here. Now that flat that's cut into this flange is the cathode. From the picture, it's the lower one here, D1. This is the infrared detector, or the receiver, and this is the infrared emitter. We'll get the two of these fully in place here. And let's get some solder on these. Here are those two LEDs mounted. We're going to pop the IC in. We just have to be aware of this notch. The notch has to line up with the notch that's on the socket. So let's get this in. Okay, so taking a look at the operation of this, I do have 12 volts applied here from my power supply. This is the IR emitter and this is the receiver. And so if I wave my hand, technically this is supposed to trigger this relay. And again, if this relay triggers, this is a normally open, so this terminals are tied into the normally open side of the output of this relay. And when this relay turns on, that red LED is going to turn on. You'll also be able to hear the click. So let's see if I put my hands over, we can get this to trigger. There we go. We heard a slight click. This, there we go. You see, it goes on and off quickly. And one thing, while I turned it off for a second, is that I realized that this pot, this trim pot, is actually the delay time that the relay stays on. So right now it's set at its minimum, so I'll turn it up just a little. Just a little, and we'll see that it's changed from that quick clicking to, let's see if I can trip it again, and that just seems to be the major fault here, is getting this to trip. There it goes, one, two, five, six, about six seconds turned right here. Now, I did check the description on the eBay listing, and it says zero to 40 seconds. So I'm not going to count out 40 seconds here, but zero was there. We saw it click on really fast. I moved it just a few degrees there. So let's try and get it. Trip again. One, two, three, four, five six and it went off about the six second mark right here one fault i'd say i can find with it is it's not that easy to trip it's it, i just got it right there so now it seems to be more it went off a faster time here so what i think is happening is that after it goes off we're getting a discharge of this capacitor through this resistor I could be wrong, but if you try and turn it off and on, just for me playing it around right here, it does tend to be more erratic. So we'll give it a little time like I did right now, and I'll try again. Let's just rub my hands together. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and it is around the six to seven second mark right there. Pretty repeatable, so I'm happy about that. Now what we'll do is we'll measure the current that this draws, and we'll get it on record just to see how much current it takes in its passive state and then when it's active as well. Let me get the meter hooked up and I'll get right back. Here we have the meter hooked up. We're looking at just less than 4 milliamps, 3.8 milliamps. And so that's a nice low current draw. Uh, it seems to be dropping. Yeah, there we go. It looks like we stabilized here. So now let me see if I can get this to activate. There it's active. So we're looking at 27 milliamps in the active state, three to four milliamps. That should probably drop down to about 3.7 again as we discharge that cap down. You can see that transient state that I was suspecting a little earlier. We leveled out about 3.78 amps in the passive state. And when it's active, it jumps up to 27.928 milliamp. Now we'll hook up something to the relay and actually just switch something on and off to give it a full test through these terminals and make sure we're fully working. Okay, so I have a set of rope lights here, 120 volts. It's plugged in right now. And I just split one of the legs, and this is live mains voltage, so be extremely careful. This is 120 volts AC. These are rope lights that are actually defective. Some are not working, most are. I'll try and trigger this, and we'll see 120 volts circuit triggered from just infrared through this little circuit board. So there we go. Lights are on. It was active right there. It's discharging right now, like we said. So we'll give it a few seconds, but 
we are now switching 120 volt mains AC and we are limited to 3 amps on the relay and that's just me reading right off the relay 3 amps I knew this took less than 3 amps uh, I knew we were safe to use this as a test again this is live 120 volts AC right here driving rope lights let me trigger it one more time there they go so we have a full test here um, I did twist it down slightly so we're looking at about three seconds of an on time right now so let's take a closer look at this circuit before we wrap it up what I did wrong before was if you look at this diode right here this is a clamping diode for this relay and what the clamping diode does is upon de-energization of the relay when the ferrite core of the coil is moving back down from being de-energized when it's moving back down from the coil it generates a spike in voltage and that spike in voltage can kill the triggering transistor this is the transistor that's triggering this relay to turn on so if we didn't have this diode to block that high voltage spike it would destroy this transistor the first time it operates so this would operate one time and it would destroy this transistor if it didn't have this clamping diode. We talked about this in another video, a video that's really comprehensive on relays. I'll put a link in the description below to that if you're interested in watching it. The second diode over here, this diode is a reverse polarity protection it's right where the power is right here. It's a reverse polarity protection diode. And so if we did somehow, even though this is, uh, it's called poker yoke, this is poker yoke, it's made so that it, it cannot go in backwards. But if you really try hard, you could really jam it in there backwards. Um, I don't know anyone who would want to do that. But if you do, this would protect the whole circuit from being destroyed from having the polarity reversed. That's what this diode is for. But what I did the last time incorrectly was this one component, I inserted it incorrectly. So it did work one time. This made a direct short right through here and backfed the whole circuit. This transistor got very hot and I didn't realize what was going on until I picked it up and I felt this was red hot right here. It destroyed the chip. Now this chip is a quad input NAND gate with Schmidt trigger. And Schmidt trigger, if you're not familiar, takes care of hysteresis and that is a whole topic it's a whole other video in the making i should make something very soon on that but it's a quad input nand gate with schmidt trigger i did have a quad input nand gate just by itself so i had the bright idea of saying let me see if i can maybe i just blew the chip i wasn't quite sure what went wrong first of all so i switched out the chip with a quad input nand gate and of course not realizing that I had really destroyed transistor I applied power and I blew out my quad input NAND gate as well so my whole point was the mistake that I made one component polarity was not observed and it destroyed the whole thing and that is this now if you look closely at this I actually eventually found out what I did wrong and you'll see that not too clearly there but I pull that out I put it back in correctly this is the quad input NAND gate that got fried this is fried this is fried the whole circuit became useless which then prompted me to buy this one which we featured today didn't make any mistakes today and if you follow it closely or if you want to build it which actually I really enjoy this one just follow my instructions the polarity observance is just really important in all of the diodes the light emitting diodes here these two all of the transistors of course and the two capacitors here so the point that i wanted to make one component can destroy it all and for your information that particular one is particularly devastating so i just thought i'd share that one with you hey i just want to take a second here to say that i did find this schematic here along with some descriptive text i am going to make this available in the link down below it describes the entire circuit it would have been helpful for me to have found this earlier, but it's fine. Again, this schematic and the description that's given here, I'll have available in the link for download in the description below. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you do happen to pick this one up, maybe you'll follow along again. I have a challenge for you, actually. This is a momentary, 
as we discovered. The uh, latching time is, is set by this uh, pot, as we already stated. It goes from 0 to 40 seconds, approximately. My challenge to you would be figure out how you can make this a latching relay and do away with the trim pot for adjusting the latching time. So that's my challenge to you. If you have any interest at all, just drop me a comment down below. Again, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Follow me on social media. Make sure you hit that subscribe button right now, and I'll see you next time.